It's so important that companies are very clear about the roles and responsibilities of all the individuals involved in a recall team and indeed in the broader organisation so that everybody understands what they need to do, when they need to do it, and they have the information available to them at the time to go and do the job that they're assigned during a food recall. The key to preparedness is to have an effective and well-documented recall protocol in place at your business. When the actions taken in a product recall go wrong, the cost can be extensive, both to the organisation and the community. When carrying out a mock recall, it's a great idea to time your activities, so you've got a benchmark to compare your performance. You should have mock recall as part of your regular processes. Here at Coles, we're more than happy to help whether it's a traceability exercise or receiving mock communications about a mock exercise, we're very pleased to help out in that regard. And whether, unfortunately, you've had a recall or whether it's just a mock recall exercise, we'd also recommend that you sit down and review what happened, what worked well, that you'll keep doing, and what you could do differently or better next time. And that just means that with practice, everything goes more smoothly before the next time you need to use it. So you need to recall product if there is a health or safety issue with your product. It's important for all food businesses to have a food recall action plan and to understand that the, while the process may seem difficult, there are templates available and there are people available to help you through the process. Make sure that you have the right people, the right resources and the right skills and capabilities to conduct it effectively. Anything that would allow you to follow the right steps and making sure that you know who's accountable for what, so roles, clear role responsibilities and a very good checklist. There are lots of documents out there, both from Fazans and AFGC and uh, from various other sources that you can actually use to guide you through. We run what is called a mass balance exercise or a traceability exercise every month. We also run through the whole procedure or the whole recall plan at least once a year. And we make sure that we follow everything from end to end as if it was a real situation. Every single process of a, either a recall or a near miss would teach you something else. When we look at the key risk factors of our clients, we're looking at two main issues. The first is what they've done in the first place to stop a recall. This will include their hazard plans, the critical control points, and how they're managing their suppliers. The second is what they're doing after they've had an incident and they need to do a recall. What practice have they done and what have they got in place to manage the recall? The GS1 recall service provides an automated and simple way for our clients to communicate with suppliers and retailers about the incident of a recall. The benefits from this in the end is that hopefully the recall will be more efficient, quicker and cheaper for both ourselves and the client. Don't underestimate how stressful that this period can be and be prepared in advance. You can draft some of your information ready to go before you go uh, to, onto the RIG portal. You could start to pre-populate a notice on recall with all of the common fields and only put the incident specific information in when you need to. Be aware of current developments overseas with food safety issues, so scanning the media, having media monitoring is really important. Doing a really good risk assessment on your product, so what sort of things could go wrong? So for example, allergen risk assessments, keep the risk assessments up to date. Working with your HACCP team to understand what the possible implications could be and what management practices you've got in place to reduce the risk. We're in the business of helping companies prepare for uh, product recalls and prevent crises. And what that means is planning, training and simulation exercises. Well, in terms of preparing, making sure you have the right attitude towards product recalls, practice. Conducting a simulation exercise, which is quite different to a mock recall. We believe that the time spent in preparation is only going to add value to your business. What we've found in working with most of our clients that many are prepared for a recall but they're not prepared for a crisis. And really understanding the difference between the two, well a recall plan will help you recover your food and, and work with your suppliers and your customers. A crisis plan is really about communicating with your stakeholders. Really one of the key pieces is being prepared to respond quickly 
So having access to those experts and being able to bring them in quickly is really what's going to be able to help you respond. We need your help to put our customers first. Be prepared. Don't wait for a recall to realise you do not know what to do or who to call. And finally, have all relevant information available, ensuring that it is accurate.